Garden. Today we're going to read another story. I hope that you all have liked this unit as much as I have. I've loved getting to hear all of these stories, and I hope you have too. Today's story is called The Story of Jumping Mouse, Part 1. All right, we're going to start with our vocabulary words. Our first word is brush. And I'm not talking about a brush that you would use to brush through your hair. I'm talking about brush. That's a bunch of bushes and other plants growing really close together. So like in this picture, when there's a lot of brush, it can be hard to walk through without scratching up your legs. That's brush. Then we have journey. A journey is a really long trip. So you might go on a journey over the summer. Who knows? But there are so many different journeys that we might go on. Alrighty, and then we have perilous. Can you say that word? It's a little tricky. Perilous. Mm. Perilous means dangerous. So like the picture of this bridge, it looks like the bridge is a little rickety and it might be dangerous. So we could say, I don't know, it would be perilous to cross that bridge. And what that means is it would be dangerous. So the next time something is dangerous, you could try to use the word perilous instead. And our last word is swayed. That means to change an idea or opinion. So you could say, Derek swayed his older brother to share his favorite toy. I don't know, Derek, did you get DeMonte or DeAndre to share their toys with you? Alrighty. So we are going to read a folk tale again today. Remember, folk tales are fiction, which means that they are not real. They did not really happen. And they are also passed down orally. That means that they're told, but they're not usually written down, right? So I'm telling you this story, but it would be hard to find a book that had all of this information in it. Today's folktale was passed down orally by Native Americans, the first known people to live in what is now called the United States of America. We talked a little bit about Native Americans on Indigenous Peoples Day. And we talked about Molly of Denali, who is a character who is a Native American. Do you hear that siren out my window? It's so loud. So when we're talking about folk tales and stories in general, usually the characters in the stories want something. Can you think about some of the things that these characters wanted? Hmm. We know that Momotaro really wanted to defeat the Oni. We also know that the Bremen animals just wanted to play in a band. We know the three billy goats gruff wanted to cross that bridge to eat some grass on the hillside. So what did they all do in order to get what they wanted? How are they similar in getting what they want? Hmm. I really want you to think about that. Because today, you're going to listen carefully to find out how Jumping Mouse gets what he wants. And how is he similar to the characters in other read-alouds in getting what he wants? Listen up and see if you can figure it out. Okay, let's get started. Once, there was a small mouse with a big dream. The small mouse had grown up listening to the elders tell wonderful stories about the far-off land. Now, the small mouse lived in the brush nearing the sparkling river. Remember, the brush is a group of bushes and other plants growing really close together. On the other side of the sparkling river was the dry desert. The small mouse had been told that the far-off land was on the other side of the dry desert. Although the mouse was small, he was brave. He intended to go to the far off land. So he planned and wanted to go over to the far off land. One day he said goodbye to his family and friends and set off. His first challenge was to find a way to cross the beautiful sparkling river. Remember, a challenge is when you have to do something that's really hard. As he stared at the lapping water, a frog appeared beside him. 
You'll have to swim, said the frog. I don't know what you mean, repli replied the small mouse, for he had never swum before. Watch me, said the frog, and with that the frog jumped into the sparkling river and began to swim. Hmm, can you sh try to swim with your arms? What does it look like when you swim? The small mouse watched the frog for several seconds before announcing, I am afraid I cannot do that. I will have to find another way to cross the sparkling river. The frog returned to the edge of the river. Why are you so determined to cross the sparkling river? Where are you going? asked the frog. I'm going to the far off land, replied the small mouse. If you don't mind my saying, you're a very small mouse to cross such a big river and travel such a long distance to the far off land. The frog stared at the small mouse for a short time. And seeing that he could not be swayed from following his plan, decided to help the small mouse. So that means the mouse would not change his plan no matter what the frog said. This is your lucky day, exclaimed the frog. I am a magic frog and I will help you. I name you Jumping Mouse. You will soon discover that you can jump higher than you've ever jumped before. Follow me, Jumping Mouse, and I will take you across the sparkling river. How do you think the gift of jumping is going to help the Jumping Mouse cross the river? What do you predict? With that said, the frog and Jumping Mouse jumped very high and landed on a leaf in the middle of the sparkling river. They floated on the leaf to the other side of the sparkling river. Goodbye, my friend, said the frog. Be brave and hopeful, and you will surely reach the far-off land. Thank you, replied Jumping Mouse. I will never forget your kindness. Jumping Mouse set off across the dry desert. He jumped across stones and twigs on his strong legs. As the frog had promised, Jumping Mouse jumped higher than ever before. He traveled by day and by night, stopping only to eat berries whenever he found them. Eventually, Jumping Mouse came to a stream. The stream gave life to this part of the dry desert. Beside the stream grew many bushes. Underneath one of the bushes, there lived a very fat mouse. Good day to you, the fat mouse said to Jumping Mouse. Good day, replied Jumping Mouse. Where are you going, asked the fat mouse. To the far off land, explained Jumping Mouse. However, I would like to rest a while and eat some of the juicy berries that grow on the bushes beside the stream. The word stream means small body of water. It's like a river, but smaller. Be my guest, said the fat mouse. Jumping Mouse stayed with the fat mouse for several days. He ate berries and drank from the cool stream. Before long, he felt rested and ready to continue his journey. It is time for me to continue my journey, said Jumping Mouse one day. The word journey means long trip, so he wants to continue on his long trip. Why would you want to travel to a place you are not even sure exists? Stay here with me, where you can eat berries and drink from the stream to your heart's content. But if you must go, be very careful, for the journey will be perilous. Indeed, for such a small mouse warned the fat mouse. Does the fat mouse think it's a good idea for Jumping Mouse to leave? Remember, the word perilous means dangerous. I will be careful, and I will find a way to pay forward the kindness you and the frog have shown me. Thank you for your generosity, replied Jumping Mouse. As his powerful legs carried him away, with hope in his heart, Jumping Mouse continued on his way. Oh my goodness, we are going to stop reading for today because the story's really long and we're going to continue it later on. I really want you to think, who are the characters in the story? Who have we met so far? Get ready to write your answer in the exit ticket on Seesaw. Click below me. And get ready to talk about this story with Mr. Malcolm and your small group. Great job, kindergarten.